how long have you been doing it? Uh, this is my second year. And you plan on continuing? Yes, I am. Is there, for the average citizen that would decide to do that, is it a challenge? Oh yeah, there's a, there's a learning curve here. You right. have to learn a whole new vocabulary. And if you... <laughs> you do. Right? It's a specialized vocabulary. Right. It's a, it's a vocabulary based in acronyms. So <laughs> you have to learn about 50 acronyms. and right. uh, Otherwise you feel like you can't yes, talk to anybody. Yes, that's right, that's right. Because they only work in acronyms. <laughs> and you've been doing it for how long? I think this is my 10th year. 10th So she's years. really good at an acronym. Yes. Acronyms. I still get acronym overload. I almost <laughs> faint sometimes. You know, it's like never let them get away with it. Always ask for the definition. What does that mean? Yep. You know. And do you still enjoy it? Um, I'm not sure enjoy is the is right that, is word. <laughs> um, it's the most. In, it's one of the most <laughs> intense things I've ever done. Right. And it takes all of you. It, it takes your um, ability to communicate, your ability to reason, your logical right. skills, your ability to relate to other people, it takes your moral and ethical compass, it takes everything. Do you feel like you reach a point where you're really good at it? No, I think you're I get better, but usually I get good at things that last year, if I could do last year over again, boy, I would nail it. It's the same yeah. thing my entire <laughs> life. By yeah. the time I was done with <laughs> kindergarten, man, I, I, I nailed, I could do <laughs> kindergarten. Yeah. So I had to go on to first grade. Yeah, darn it. You know, it's like, so, so, um, but you, you do get better, but also right. you expect more of yourself. Mm -hmm. But I think the thing to me is that I think it's one of the most worthwhile things that I've ever done, even when I don't accomplish what I set out to accomplish, because I know I'm giving voice to my constituents yeah. and also my own views and I'm making that contribution. You're putting that in the right. conversation and even if you don't, things don't come out the way the right. way you want. I mean, it's one of the most important things anybody could do, but it's very difficult. Well, I, I agree and, and one of the things, let me give you, an, uh, for example, I keep a little notebook, so every, th all of my... Uh, this. Yeah, so, you so have many I've, of got, these I've, got, I've got, oh yeah, I've, well, mm -hmm. no, but uh, you know, it's I've got page get after page after page. So we're in our committee in H House Human Services, and we're doing H-112, which is uh, we're drafting an act relating to access to uh, financial records for adult protective service investigations. We take testimony for two and a half hours. We have a break for 15 minutes, and then we come to Act 192, involuntary medication. We take, and you have to switch gears. Right. Okay. Do so you, you film these? Oh, there are, this is all on tape. It's Anyone on can tape. come in at any time, sit there with you, mm -hmm. listen to every conversation. It's right. all on tape. This, th the public has access to everything that we say. But how do you remember all this? So you, oh, you that's how I take notes. So I have to do, then we go into reach up and, and TANF, uh, temporary assistance for needy families. And so in one day, we can be on three or four of these really high intense issues. Right. We're not going to resolve them all on, on that one particular day, but you do this for weeks with five, six, ten, twenty issues, and then every other committee is doing the same thing. And so talk about having to learn a lot. And, right. and so I go home. This is my schedule. <laughs> <laughs> I, I come to the, I come to the, I no, I come to, to work at, at eight o'clock in the morning yeah. and have a coffee or something or a meeting, and then it goes through the day. But when I leave, I leave and I go home at the, the condo, the, the place that I'm staying, and then I have to study for three or four hours wow. what yeah. I mm -hmm. haven't learned in other committees to keep up on what they're doing so that when I go into the General Assembly and there's something that's coming up for discussion, I know what they're talking about. Otherwise, I, I'd be, I'd be out, out, you know, out to see. I, I, I and, see. And one of the things that people should know is that on the legislative website, which is www.leg.state.vt.us, um, you can click on a committee, like you could click on Steve's committee. Right. You could drop their agenda. You could drop the documents, the memos, the testimony that he's hearing. Now, in order to get right. the tape, you'd actually s have to send for a desk or something. Yeah. But you could actually call up the testimony by the head of AHS or whatever gotcha. about something. Right. And you could know what the committees are doing. And this is something that is new in the past couple of years. So pe for people who have good internet access <laughs> yes. and, and are interested, right. they can actually track what's going on. And I use that to do what you're saying 
to try to keep up with the other bills that are moving. Like if there's a tax bill, I can go into the Ways and Means Committee, and although I can't get their discussion and their back and forth, I can at least see what so-and-so testified about it. Right. And so it helps us keep up, but it also can help the general public just find out, well, what are yeah, they hearing yeah, about special right. education and the education? I mean, it's, it's, it's really unbelievable yeah. that people now have that access. Yeah. There, was a, there was an article that came out uh, in the Manchester Journal last year sometime in which the author, and I think that it was Don Keelan, uh, indicated about the time issue. And we really are constrained by time, uh, I feel. I feel that we sometimes are asked to make... Is that because the year isn't a full year for you? Oh, yeah, it's only, it's only five, five months. So uh, we have a lot of work to do all the time for right. five months. And we still visit people or meet with people throughout the course of the whole year. But I find that it is almost, you know, the time is inadequate. To How can to you do it in five months from what I'm hearing? I mean, uh, <coughs> I should say to our viewers, uh, this is uh, on the table and we're, they're going to spend a few minutes today just uh, going through the main issues that they want to talk about, what's happening up on the hill, the good, the bad, the ugly. <laughs> um, so uh, we'll get to that for just a second, but I'm curious. Um, my mom was a town clerk uh -huh. and um, she pointed out in her later years as being a town clerk mm -hmm. that the job was getting so difficult that most towns would only give the town clerk a small amount of time in which to get this job done. And she was saying, it's getting really hard to, to do the job for what it was being paid in the amount of allotted time and what I'm hearing from you is that this job is, seems to me to be getting so difficult that this quaint notion of five months and we're done and we're out of there and it's back to the farms. Oh, maybe you have a, maybe you have a different, uh, different point of view. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, I think. I mean, I why th is it only five months? Um, think? I think it, it, it's a, it's a part-time citizen legislature. It's yeah. not a full-time legislature, and Vermont has made a deliberate decision to do that. Now, there have been sessions that went into June. I mean, there's nothing sacred about May second, except that that's the amount of money they allocate. Right. If you go b too far into May you start having to allocate more money, and that's, that's not so good. But one thing you want to keep in mind is that there's only really a couple of bills that have to pass. The budget has to pass. Right, every year. If you need to raise tax revenue to finance that budget, a tax bill has to pass. So everything and else is the things And then the capital like bill and the transportation bill. Right. So only those things have to pass. Right. But everybody has um, agendas, you know, political agendas, yeah. things they want yeah. to do. And also there's extra pressure. This year because it's the second year of the biennium and any bill that isn't handled and passed now is dead. Last year you could introduce something and it would still be alive for this mm. session. But any bill is dead and it has to start over again in the entire process. So if a bill passed the Senate but it hasn't passed the House and it doesn't make it, it's dead. It's got to start all over yeah. again. You know, mm -hmm. so there's like extra pressure here. I think that one of the things is probably almost any legislature is going to have enough stuff to work on because everybody's got ideas about how things yeah, should be it different. Like you know. Plenty to do. But legislative leadership mm -hmm. there and the chairs of the committees, they're the ones that kind of decide, well what are we actually going to do? Right. They do the priority. And that's why the question of who controls it and who are the chairs of the committee, that's important because Steve and I were on committees, but we're not in positions of leadership. And once you get in those positions, then you have a little bit more control because it's a question of allocating legislative time exactly. and attention. Right. It Do you really feel like, is. so I, we should stop, okay. otherwise you're going to run out of time. Um, but we'll keep talking on this issue again and again and again. So why don't you lead off and what's, what, did, what do you have on the table? What's the thing you want to talk about most today? Oh, I, I, I just wanted to have a conversation, so. Okay. But, but we, what are you we, working we, on out there? Right now, we're, oh, we're working on a whole bunch of things. I know, but that's S20 the and act related to establishing the regulatory dental therapists. And so tell me about that, because <coughs> we're trying to get therapists to do dental therapy. Rather than try to get a full-time dentist in. Right. So when I go to my dentist I, and I have my teeth cleaned, yeah. that lady also knows quite a bit about everything a hygienist. else. Hygienist. Right. Yeah. And so we're going to allow that to happen. Well, uh, we don't know if we're going to allow that to happen. But, uh, what, what I do know is that we're taking a lot of testimony on this, pro and con. Uh, dentists uh, in the state right now don't appear to really want to have dental therapists here. Uh, is it they a have dental hygiene. Yeah, I think it's a competition issue.
But there's, th we just heard from the dean of the School of, of Medicine at uh, the University of Minnesota, and he's a really impressive guy. And they have dental therapists all over the rural part of right. the state of Minnesota right. now that's being h highly successful. And um, they've sort, of, they sort of launched the program. But he's been going around for places and, and advocating for dental therapists because you can handle many more patients, particularly in a right. rural um, state like Vermont, um, because there are so many dental needs right. and people can't afford them. A dental therapist learns what a dentist does, except much uh, does not have specialization. So a dental therapist will learn 35 procedures. Like cavities. Like a dentist cleaning, does. Exactly, right, yeah. Right. Yeah, so a dentist learns those 35 plus another right. 150. So what happens is you generally are in the 35 area. And so a dental therapist can do that. And all the specialization can go right. to, and the price differential is huge. Right. $300 an hour for a dentist. <laughs> Uh, compared to, I don't know, $60 an hour for... for uh, it seems like a no-brainer to uh, me. I'm really a fan of this. Yeah. My dentist I, said to me, then I said, so how do poor people, because we were talking about a tooth implant. Yeah, said, yeah. I said, okay, so how do poor people do all this stuff? And, I get and he goes, they get, them all, they they get, get all their pulled. teeth pulled yeah. until they and, can't and chew and anymore. But see, the problem with that is that it, 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 it diminishes their ability to... Everything. Not only, yeah, but the, their life expectancies goes way down. Uh, as soon yeah. as you lose your teeth your life expectancy goes down. I mean, all of the, all the ramifications of that. I mean, these, yeah. uh, when you start getting into the weeds on all of these yeah. issues, it's very fascinating because we do this in our, in our different committees, but you start, there's a here, layer here, and then there's another layer, and there's another layer, and there's another layer. Right. And, then, <clears throat> and so that's what's really fascinating about this job because there's so much that you can learn, and you do, and I, I like to learn, so this is really... So uh, you try to get the positives to outweigh the cons, yeah, so yeah, eventually right. you can say, okay, there'll be an evil dental hygienist, but for the most part, yeah, and, it and helps. You know, you what, you, yeah, you, want, you have to eventually look out for the whole state and right. say, what's best for everybody? I, 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 I want my dentists to feel like they're appreciated and they're good and yeah. they're necessary. We have to have really good dentists. But we also have a whole group of people that aren't being served currently. So how do we get those people served so right. they don't get into the health problems that are associated with not having right. dental therapy or, or help for that? They go into emergency rooms, yeah. and that costs the state a lot more. And is this but all also over the it costs state? Them it's all over the state, oh, yeah, or yeah. is it is yeah. Bennington County oh, this is the, the in the more need than other sectors of the oh, state? Oh, no, the Northeast Kingdom Northeast is. Kingdom? Uh, yeah. uh, also, Bennington County is. Yeah, Bennington yeah. County. I mean, there's, there's uh, places where, where there are people that are, you know. Are you good with this, well. what they're working um, on? I, I'm certainly open to it. I think that, that uh, there aren't enough dentists and there aren't enough, I know there aren't enough dentists who take Medicaid patients. Uh, and so right, if you had a way to multiply right. their capacity to serve through the dental therapist, I think that would make sense. The irony is that the governor proposed financing Medicaid partly with a provider tax on dentists. That's not, that, we're and that's not, not we're going not dealing, anywhere. But we're not I, dealing you're with not that. Dealing, I know, we're but I just want to, but, yeah. but not in yeah. his committee, but elsewhere. No. That's what the governor proposed. I don't think it's got a lot of support, right. but here it is. You don't have enough dentists, and you're actually going to try to have dental therapists to multiply the effect of, of, of dentists, and yet you're going to tax dentists. That's not going to make them want to be not, here, no, you know. That's, so I that's think that's some of right. the, that's some of the <laughs> ironies of these. Sometimes, at the, it seems like you're you're doing things that are at cross yeah. purposes. Now again, yeah. I don't think that provider tax has a lot of right. support, but they're going to have to pay for Medicaid somehow. And one of the big problems we have up there is that people continually promise benefits when they don't have a way to pay for now it. Can I just ask a question on this subject? So. Yeah. Sure. I know that you, you become a dentist because it will give you potentially a very good living. Well, they so are, yeah, but they also have a huge overhead. So the, I mean, and, I, and I know <laughs> that, but, but, it, but be fair you, know, to you don't go in, you know. No, you, no you, that's right. If you have a choice between going into public access or becoming a dentist, <laughs> you might become <laughs> yeah. a dentist, okay? okay. <laughs> so the question I have for you is that this new group of, what would they be called? Dental therapists. Dental therapists. Yeah. So even if... So if they were created, could they still make a really decent living in the state of Vermont, even if they took Medicaid patients? Like, I hear a lot about how you don't want to take really poor people because you don't make a good living. So 
you know, you're, you're good living is always in the eyes of the well, beholder, you know, right? The, the, a lot of the dentists go into it for the right reasons, just to help people. And, and I'm not, know? and I'm not saying um, I'm, and, I, and we know and all that. Not, yeah. the, the, but I, I would say that um, when you go into the doctor's office right. now, uh, you, you may see your primary physician, um, or you may see a physician's assistant. Right. And a physician's right. assistant right. Uh, can do an awful lot that's not necessary for your your doctor to right. do. And yet the doctor has a liability and he has the, the bills to pay and yes, so on. Right. And yet the cost is borne by having a person who can do a lot there that is very helpful. Right. And I think it's a smart, uh, I think it's, it's proven to be right. uh, results-based. Um, so you see where I'm program? going with this. Yes. In other words, instead of taxing the doctors, which no one wants, I mean, can't we just set up this program? And I, and I know the dentists won't necessarily like the competition, but I'm sure there's a huge unmet market that perhaps they don't want to take right now that could be met and still provide a good income level well, and it without and having any new taxes. And the dental the therapist could even be operating from their own office. It wouldn't necessarily be a right. direct competitor. It could be right. an enhancement to their office. But or I think, even in the schools. But I think one something. of the I things. I was wondering about that, right. You know, and there, there already are dentists in yep. schools sometimes. Yep. Right. But yep. the other thing you need to understand is one of the problems with Medicaid from the provider's perspective, whether it's a dentist or a doctor, is um, Medicaid does not reimburse the full cost of the service. Right. Mm -hmm. Medicare reimbursement is supposed to. Some people say it does, some people say it. Medicare, that's the ones for people 65 and older. Medicare is supposed to reimburse for the cost of the service. Right. Medicaid in Vermont is 80% of what Medicare does. So right there, if Medi suppose Medicare really is covering your cost, Medicaid, the one for low income people, is not. And so if you're missing that 20% okay. and that's, you, you're going to have to eat that cost. So when the dentist... Because you can't get it from the person you just have it. Yes, they don't have it. So, so it's right. really important to understand that dentists have to cover their costs. If you're, in, if you're running a practice, you right. cannot continue if you're not cover th covering their costs. So when they're saying we can't take Medicaid patients or we can't take too many, most of them take a number. They it's do, just, yeah. if you have a whole practice of Medicaid right. patients, you're underwater 20 percent so one of the ironies about right. this state is that even though we've talked a lot about single payer and state-run health insurance we actually do not fully finance the public benefits we already have okay. and and so one of the things that would be really good is if going forward with medicaid is if we figure out a way to finance it sustainably, if we have to trim some of the benefits, we do that, but we finance that properly so that we're paying the providers. Otherwise, you won't have providers. And we're, well, losing, I, we're losing independent practitioners, we're losing doctors, and the problems with Medicaid reimbursement are part of it. So how does this new group make, so they're in the same boat as the, as the dentists then, They'll still I don't, have I don't even I don't no. even know. They no. would have a different cost structure. No. I don't even know how they'd be reimbursed. Mm. I and I think no. I don't th I think we're right. going to go beyond where we really know what works. Exactly. And we're, but we're we know we need them. Well, we know there are a lot of people that do not get right. dental help and those people end up in the hospital. Right. And which costs us all more money. Right. Oh, that's the issue. I and mean, also I mean, they it's, have it's, 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 worse their health, health their health. Like so right. it's like and, could and, we try this? Could we do a pilot project? Could we try it? Let's try it. Right. You know. Yeah, that's right. So. Or at least get them in the school. But you see, one of the things that I found out, uh, and maybe this is your experience too, but we have spent so much money on trying to remediate problems that already exist. Right. Prevention. Right. We, we, don't prevention. we do not spend the money right. on prevention. Right. We're building right. prisons. We, oh, my God. So, <laughs> right. so you, you have right. everywhere, all across the board, as I see it, Cynthia, <coughs> our biggest problem is that we don't plan, do long-range planning and put the money turn the dial into prevention. I think prevention and, and making sure that we're a healthy citizenry uh, and, well, and I, think uh, I, I guess, I mean, I've been in there longer than you have, and I'm not saying longer, we've, yeah. done, we've done it all the way, but we certainly have requirements in terms of health insurance that it has to cover preventive care. And that was true even before the Affordable Care Act. So we've tried to be sure that health insurance and Medicaid, that it covers preventive care. We've also, in terms of the corrections, we've also put in place diversion programs, whereas if someone right. is arrested for a crime and it turns out they have an underlying mental right. health issue or they have a substance, we try to divert them into treatment so right. they never go to jail. They now, solve their problem and then they can Before we go society. there, um, do, you, do you have another half an hour? Sure. Mm -hmm. 
Because maybe what I'll do is just do two shows. We'll right. just split it in half so people can watch the first half hour and the other half hour. Yeah, sure. Because yeah. we're, we're already there. We can't leave them yet, right? We're not even there yet, folks. So, so anything else on that well, issue? Uh, well, the issue... Give me the everything you want I, on that. My, my sense is it's a little bit different. And I am new, so, so I, I defer to the wisdom of... The one wisdom we're not, here? We're but, not done, but, but we have done some things. But, right. And I'm saying that, that I am shocked by the amount of money that is placed into trying to fix crises right. and problems. And it is not even close, the amount of money that goes into prevention and to making yes. a, a health the, the priority, uh, whether it's environmental health or human health or, or whatever children, it is. Right. What, whatever it is, we do not put the money there, and so we're paying way, way, way more later on because we're not doing... Right. Right. We don't right. have our priorities right. right My mother was a case. social worker, and she worked with troubled teens. And her point was always, we're leaving these kids way too long with people that they shouldn't be left with. Oh, boy. And by the time I, they get to me, you know, if you're lucky, if you get one of them to come back to the real world, right? right. So it was right. for her, it was we're always going in too late, yeah. and we're always doing it on the cheap. And that's where yeah. my prison comment came from because yeah. we're right. always saying, well, well, now that we can't fix them, let's stick them in a house somewhere for a while. Yeah, but we, we're, we're, not, we're really not doing that in Vermont. We no, really have made big efforts. It. I mean, right. it's yes. still happening, yeah. but yeah. we've made big, big efforts I, in those I, areas. Yeah. So I just did hear a wonderful story about a poor little child. We won't go into that. You know, just another poor example of another child in southern Vermont in these deplorable conditions. And the only reason we found out about it is because the police had to show up for some reason. Yeah. So I know it's still there. And it reminds me of um, when they always say the best time to check out poverty in Vermont is when the leaves are gone. Because then you can start really looking through the trees and really seeing what's going on in Vermont. So I know it's not as bad as other states, but I have a feeling there's still... It's oh a yeah! Lot huge. Oh yeah! But here. but I mean the the other thing is that yeah, that's what it's so yeah. hard for this state. You ha you always have these balance of rights and responsibilities, yeah. mm -hmm. and one of the reasons why I think t things tend to get really bad in a family before there's intervention is it has to get bad enough to justify overriding parents' rights or, yeah. or intervening. Yeah. I mean that's not a small thing, no. and I think we're continually trying to get a better balance on that. Um, and at what point, I mean, and, and you know, you have individual responsibility, you have community yeah. responsibility, where do you draw those lines? Yeah. But I think the, the investments in prevention are crucial. It's just it's a lot easier to mobilize putting resources into a crisis yes, than it is. is to mobilize putting resources right. into prevention because exactly. we never have yeah. enough money. And, right. and, so, and so, but the question of long-range planning right. and prevention is not something that, our political system is good at at any level, mm -hmm. and we just have to keep trying to do it, except at the select board level where we actually save money for things. We actually have savings. Now, I'm going to pull you off that topic for okay. a minute because before I leave you on this topic, yeah. you good? Yeah. yeah. You sure? Yeah. I just would say that, yeah. that um, um, to encapsulate for me, I've learned a lot about the parent-child centers, and I love it. Uh, I love that program because it takes... Uh, a person, and a woman, program parent, child center. We have, we have that in Bennington. We have them all over the state. What they do is these are centers that, that focus on um, young families, uh, pregnant women, uh, their children. They teach classes, make sure they're, they're learning how to parent, making sure the child is, is getting what right. the child needs nutritionally and all those. It's a really good program. And if you, if you follow that type of thinking, then you're not going to have as many of those children grow right. up with the problems that mm -hmm. we're seeing with children mm -hmm. in right. schools and then finally getting uh, getting into situations where they get into trouble and then they're delinquent and then they're you know so so it, that the parent child centers are, are a wonderful preventive measure right. to do healthy things that, that create a strong families and that's what I love. And that's I the mean. foundation of everything and remember we are doing that. Now we maybe doing not enough. Do, but all families, we are doing do all families have to do that or if I'm a no. family that no, no, doesn't really no, give no, a rat's no. ass do I no. do no. I have to do no. it? No. No. And see that no. that's the thing I mean you know if if somebody doesn't want to cooperate doesn't want to play doesn't want to ask for help mm -hmm. you know at, there's no way for us to go in and say you have to do this unless the child is clearly in trouble 
and, and the schools right. see it and mm -hmm. know it, and then they can follow. So we're back up. to the schools as the first the alarm. The schools, the the schools, relatives, right. neighbors. Right. Um, it's it's very difficult. It's but very we're not difficult. living in a tripodal society anymore, where the schools and the families and the churches communicate with each other and support, do the mutual support mm. that they did in the 50s and the 60s, right. uh, and in, even right. into the 70s. Those days are gone. We have to find new models that are going to help us so that parents are supported and children are supported and, and the communities are mutually, you know, people living yeah. in a community are mutually supportive. Uh, I, I think the, the, the parent-teacher organizations, those things, and the parents that want to do that are still there. I just think that many it's parents harder. are working so hard just to it's try harder. to earn a living, they're not able to participate. And then some of them have chaotic lives and they're really not that's right. functional. And then, right. you know, that's another kind of problem. Yeah. Your turn, lady. Okay. What's on the top of your list? Um, I would say I've got so many things that I could talk about, but I'm just going to bring up the Act 46 issue. <laughs> um, that because issue. Yes, <laughs> because I think that there are many people who are watching <clears throat> this who have heard about that yes. and might be concerned about that. Uh, so I guess so I just like do to... We need to, do we need to... I thought it might give a snapshot. Yes, of what of it where is we are. and why. Yeah. Well, yeah. a little bit of... I'm not assuming that people don't know, but, um, but I guess add I'll a little give, of that okay. too. Act 46 was passed last year, and it sets up a process for um, consolidating education governance. And it also lays out really ambitious goals for um, equity of opportunity in education and quality education and things that all of us would agree with. But the main way that it wants to do that is to consolidate governance. Now, what does that mean? Governance is the district school board, the supervisory board, those kinds of different boards. Can that you run give the us school. a local example? Yeah, so we, we have a Manchester that. school board that runs the Manchester um, elementary and middle school gotcha. grades. Arlington runs the Arlington. Um, elementary and high school and then Sandgate has no schools but it operates it, it operates the bus and it monitors uh, the payment of the tuition for the different students from mm -hmm. Sandgate so gotcha. there's still a school board in Sandgate right. so the idea of the the people behind the bill and I'll just say uh, right off that I voted against this bill for a variety of reasons is that the way to provide better opportunities and to do it in a more cost-efficient way is to consolidate governance. And their idea is really to merge all the districts so that, in other words, you wouldn't have the supervisory union board here, like the BRSU, the Bennington Rutland right. Supervisory Union, and then Dorset, Manchester, um, Paulette, Rupert, Sunderland, all those different school, school boards, boards, they would all be merged into one. One big school board. One big school board, and there'd be voting from each of those districts. But the bigger school districts, the bigger towns would have more representations on the new board. Right. And, then, um, and then the idea is you'd save uh, administration costs and you'd be able to share resources and all of the work. <coughs> the problem is, the way they set it up is that only similar districts can merge. So, for instance, Sunderland is K through six, and Manchester is K through eight. They can't merge because they have a different combination of operating grades and choice grades. So, if Sunderland wants to merge with Manchester, it's going to have to send seventh and eighth to Manchester's mm -hmm. school. And, and, and just a quick question: yeah. Why? Why? can't they? That is the best question and and I don't think they did it so right. I, that's one reason I voted against this because Because we're just talking about boards. Sense. The yes. schools are still there. We're just the talking about a board. The schools are still there. No, it has to do with this question of choice and no choice. Are you operating the grades of the school or do your students have choice? And the way they set it up is that you can only do this merging, this new kind of merging, if you have exactly the same combination of operating schools and choice and I think that was a big mistake right. and then the in mm -hmm. addition to that there are um, there are incentives to merge in other words right. if you merge <laughs> you will get a property tax reduction which Manchester missed I think um, right? well they, they could still be eligible for future ones but that's one of the points they're trying to mm -hmm. make people do this really fast and right. this is really complicated right. and they're trying to make them do too fast also everybody has always known that the patterns of mergers that they most want don't make a lot of sense in our part of the state. There are some parts of the states where there are like three K through six schools right next to each other, all half empty. Clearly, they can merge and consolidate. That's not what we have down here. Now, that's but a school merger as opposed to a board merger. Both of them. Mm -hmm. You could have both of them. You right. could have you could have different combinations. But of I thought it. Act 46 wasn't about school merger that's as what much they as say. a board. They, no, they, right. it, it may involve school right. closures at some points, but it was board merger. Which would mergers. make sense board in some cases. cases. In some cases, it should. Now, I want to make clear, anybody who wants to merge 
with consolidate governments, anyone who wants to close a school, they should, the community should be voting for what makes sense for them educationally and financially. Right. The problem is Act 46 made this mandate that you have to do it. And, and, and if you don't want to do it, you can't find a, a like dance partner. You have to go to the Board of Education and say, please, could we just keep doing what we're doing or could we do something mm -hmm. different? Because we can't come up with 900 students. I have to have 900 students right. to do this. And I know the Sandgate's trying to figure yeah, out where and they Sandgate's go. Yeah, right. and Sandgate's going to have to merge with Stratton or Ira. There's no geographical <laughs> contiguity. There's no history. It's a pure administrative fiction. And I don't Can't think do that, that made no. sense. So do they Skype? Um, <laughs> I guess they'd have to because I mean, what no. Yeah, I mean, I'm not just no miles away. There's Sandgate. no way I'm driving. There's no Sandgate. internet. Okay. There's Ira, no internet. Sandgate I'm not driving. No. I'm sorry. No. See. So it, my kids are going to fail. No. 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 <laughs> it just. It just. It. They went too far. The mandate is too far. So I have a bill that would make merging voluntary. Everybody has to look. You have to try to find these kinds of possibilities. Mm -hmm. But after you've looked, if you can't find it, you can keep going as you are. So that's one of my bills. The other problem here is that remember. One of the motivations here, we definitely want to have quality education, but we're also concerned about property tax rates. So the idea is that we may be able to save administrative costs, which may be true, but administrative costs are a tiny part of all of education costs. Right. The other problem is the merger incentives that they're going to give to reward districts that merge, they're going to be paid for from the Ed Fund. Right. So if, if I'm a district that merges, I'm going to get property tax reductions, and you guys are going to pay more. To pay me. That's right. The state is not putting more money right. into the fund to do that. And this is the whole problem with property tax rates. From my view, having studied this for quite some time, the state has exploited the education fund by using it to cover expenses that should be in the general fund, in s including certain kinds of tax right. credits. And there's probably like $200 million in the Ed Fund that should be in the general fund. That's 20 cents on the property tax rate. So the idea that the state is saying, well, the administration costs are the problems and you guys all have to merge to save money, when they are the ones that are responsible for the high property tax rates. It's just absurd. But, but the, the, the administrative the costs are very high. No, but they're a tiny fraction of overall. They're, but they're it's 10%. Still, but but it's, okay, but it's still something that could uh, be they're, done. They're, 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 I think they're still too high. You think when you've got a merged district with 12 towns, you don't think that new superintendent is going to hire three assistants? Well, it's well, not going to go away. Okay, but here we have, we have three supervisory unions in our area in Bennington County, right? Right. Yep. Okay. So aren't there some redundancies maybe? I don't know. I, I think there certainly could be redundancies, but if you want to understand the drivers of property tax rates and education costs, it's the number and compensation of staff and it's the state's abuse of the education fund. Uh, now, and, and now many, now the interesting thing about staff is that uh, my understanding is that so far this year, 500 teachers have retired. Mm -hmm. And part of that is baby boomers like me aging out and retiring. Right. And part of that is that five years ago, the state changed the retirement fund. So that if you worked another five years, yeah. you get better benefits. And those five years are up. So if we end up having mm. retirements, most of those teachers will be replaced. But they'll be replaced with new, younger teachers who cost less. And some of them won't be replaced. So it's possible yes. that there may be a natural kind of attrition that can bring our number of staff in line with the number of students. Because it's true. We have a really low student-staff ratio, student-teacher ratio. Right. We have not shrunk that school capacity as the students have, have, have shrunk. And we need to do that. Uh -huh. It's just that and we there, also need the state to take responsibility. And there are savings there. Right. Uh, you know, we know, exactly what, what, what right. Cynthia is talking right. about. It could that's be $20 million. I mean, that, oh, yeah. yeah. I mean that and that has nothing to do with Act 46. It, no, it, but it, could be, it would be a but natural... It, impact, it, impacts, it could impact property tax. It could be really good. Oh, yeah. No, it could be really good, but it won't be because of governance. So let me ask one question be before I lose my thought on this. So you're going to introduce this bill... I already did. ...to try to change this big Act 46. Right. Can you actually do that? Or is okay, Act well, 46 remember, a train that's no, no, moving no, no. now? Remember that we already changed something about Act 46. There was a lot of coverage in the news about the right. percentage caps, yes. and they already um, expanded those so they're not so tight. I think Arlington met it. I think Manchester came close. It may have a small penalty. The penalties right. are smaller than they were because they realized, wait a minute, this was too harsh what we did. Yes. So what they have to do now is they have to figure out what kind of caps are they going to have yeah. for next year. Yeah. And then they're also looking at other 
aspects of the act, because you know you do something big and complicated and hard, you don't always get it all right. You have to tweak it. That's what they're always right. talking about, tweaking. Mm -hmm. So there is going to be some kind of other education bill moving. That um, but how does this affect towns? So how do I make a decision as a town if this big Act 46 came in and I've got to be doing these things and folks are throwing in amendments or whatever they're called to right. say, wait, let's, right. let's adjust this. Right. I mean, as a town, what should I do? If you I come from Sandgate, should I just sit here and say, let's just wait? Well, you, that's right. one option. In fact, if I was on a school board, I would be on strike. I wouldn't be doing any of it. But what, <laughs> you, what you should always do is you should, um, is you should assume that the existing law will be in place. And you should be obeying and abiding by the existing law. Right. And then if you think it should be changed, you should be letting people like right. us know how. But what's the big thing in the existing law that I, as a that citizen, you have to look at the governance. can count on? You, the, the, you have to look at the governance. That you can't Most change on me tomorrow. I, no, you, even even under my bill, everybody still has to look at governance consolidation. Mm -hmm. It's just that which I make Which is those it three school, which is those three major uh, supervisory areas. Or some permutation, some sort of, some sort of recombinant, a rearrangement right. of those. So that's got to happen anyway. And they're the, and they're the Act 46 study committees. I mean, Dorset right. and Manchester and Sunderland, they're all, you know, Arlington. They have to, they they have they to have talk to. with each other now. They have to talk, and right. they are, and my bill doesn't change that. No. Well, all that my bill would do would be say, ultimately, if you can't find any rational partners that have 900 students and all that kind of stuff, that you can do something else. And, and that you don't have to ask an unelected school board the Board of Education to um, give you permission to do that. But right now, any district should assume that what is in place is going to be law. So you better get your ass in So you have right. to be looking at, and they are, they already right, are. They're doing it, right. And then the other thing is, but in terms of next year, the big question is what are the caps going to be for next year, if anything? And is the state going to actually, I would like to see the state come up with cash to pay the cost of the merger incentives and the property tax um, reductions because why should yeah why should it would relieve the towns. I mean they're essentially bribing towns to do something with their own money right. you know and that's they and it's yeah. and, and that's not right now that's going to be really hard because that's, the well, state has no money but at least they could acknowledge it and say that in the future we're going to do it now okay, we have, hold we that have thought. This, we have the other we have the other issue uh, going on and and we both came up against this uh, at least I did when I went door to door um, the last time we were we were running. Uh, People were really concerned about property taxes. Right. Uh, there has to be some sort right. of a threshold on on how much uh, you know. You have to contain some costs here. Yeah. You want to have the best schools you can possibly have. You want to support your teachers. You want the children to have the very best education. Um, but you can't keep on raising the property taxes. I voted. Uh, I voted after um, voting for the repeal. Uh, based upon my, what my constituents said from Manchester, they wanted me to vote for the repeal of Act 46. Of Act 46. Right. And that's, that's taking the thresholds, you know, changing the thresholds. Uh, so I, I did that, but that was defeated. And so I had to look at, well, is this a compromise that most people can live with? Um, and I voted that way because I felt, well, for the time being, until uh, presentation, uh, the law that goes into effect, maybe because of what, what Cynthia is doing, uh, at this particular moment, it makes the most sense because there will be less of an opportunity for the, the well, be the, the property tax won't go up so high. And it will also force the schools to really do some good consideration of their budgets to make sure that they're not overspending where they don't have to. Right. So, and so it's just it, it's sort of a pragmatic but, approach. But, but you see, there's something else going on Do you think they're not here. doing that now? But, but I, think they are, I think they are doing no, it, but I think, there's, I think there's one issue that we need to understand. The, every year, the, um, in, the, change, the increases in compensation from the union contracts add like $30 million in cost to the Ed Fund. That's three cents on the property tax rate. And what we have is we have a structure where you have certain percentage increases. And when you have percentage increase, percentage increase, it just, there's like a compound interest effect. And also the higher, when you give percentage increase over time, the highest paid and the lowest paid get further apart because you're giving a percentage of the mm -hmm. high and okay. a percentage of the low. Right. Right. In Arlington on the highway, department we take the lowest paid or sometimes the middle paid guy and we take like two percent of his salary and then we give the other people the same dollar amount 
And so that means that the top paid person doesn't get as big a percentage increase, mm -hmm. but they get the same dollar increase. And right. I think that's what we need to do at the education level, and that's what we need to do at the state level. Otherwise, you're never going to get control of these costs because it's just this compound yeah. interest. I now, agree. this is very, this yeah. is very difficult. This yeah. is collective yeah. bargaining, union negotiations. I understand that, but it's I just difficult. have to put it out there that as long as you're just giving automatic two and three percent right. raises, unless you can shrink the number of teachers, which is something we're talking about, which is you know, seems which to be has to happen, right. which is you know, happening. it's going to be, it's going to be. Wait, a so then let me, uh, let me, let's just go. Uh, in 2017, this is all supposed to be worked out, Act 46. Is that correct? That's the deadline Assuming for there's no more amendments to, s to push yeah, this thing. Yeah, and my amendments push the deadlines yeah, out. But I think 2017... Are you just going to stretch this into the year 2075? What the <laughs> hell is going on, Cindy? <laughs> no, I just want to give schools right? more time They're gonna be to old. do this right. The, the Cynthia's going to be coming in her walker. I'm never giving up, man. <laughs> I'll be there. <laughs> no, no. The, it, but you see, remember... Well, here's where I'm getting at. Okay. Here's where I'm getting at. Okay, so Act 46. It feels to me like uh, this problem... Okay, all right, so we do Act 46... Too many teachers for too few kids. Okay, so we fire but up they some don't teachers. But they didn't even do that. All right, well, hold they on. They didn't even so, say that. All right, so maybe that's Act 47. No, go <laughs> ahead. Get some teachers. Go ahead. Go ahead. All right, so we got to start getting <laughs> kicking some people out of here, right? So so there goes some teachers. Yeah, we start firing <laughs> all these people. So no, everybody's no, gone. No, 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 All right, well, we asked them to leave, you know, <laughs> late at night. I don't know. <laughs> so anyways, no. but the point is, is that Act 46 has done its thing. It's consolidated. It's like, ah. Oh, much better. Maybe see, we see property taxes go down a little bit. No, but you won't. But my question is, is like, this feels like a one-stop measure at a certain point in time. Three years from now, what if our population drops more and there's even okay. fewer kids? Okay, there's a projection there. It's supposed to continue dropping a little bit and then level off. But one, one of the things that I think you've hit on is that this is this idea that this consolidation of governance is going to solve some of our problems. And it's a centralization. It's a, it's a top-down kind of right, model. Right. And I think it's exactly wrong. I think they should have pushed more power and accountability down to the lower levels. There's something called the principle of subsidiarity. Is Decision-making power should be at the lowest possible level where people are truly involved in the activity. Mm. So I think, and th this is one of the reasons I voted against Act 46 for many reasons, because I think they actually got it flipped. Consolidation is like an educational fad. They weren't looking at what's actually true in per certain parts of the state. They just felt that consolidation of governance was the answer. Well, if they, well, and and when they, whenever they right. looked at our district, they said, yeah, it's not going to work there. But we don't care. You got to do it anyway. That's right. wrong. Well, see, but, okay, uh, I agree with, with Cynthia on it being wrong, but that's what we had to deal with. In right. other words, people came in with a plan. This is a plan. Now, how, there how, do you, how do you make that, that plan work? It wasn't coming in with Cynthia's plan. Oh, yes, they did. Yes, that plan was offered to the when, Education Committee. When, no, that plan was offered for two year? years. Last year, well, yes, it was. And they rejected it. They consciously rejected it because they're who, obsessed. Who, who, who rejected it? The Speaker and uh, the speaker? Chairman Sharp, yes. And, right. and, well. and, and Tristan Tolino and Chip Conquest and Will Stevens, who was before your time, they had a whole coherent presentation about engaging people at the lower mm. levels, school boards and community members, to figure out how to make these cost decisions and these decisions about staffing, and to do it there instead of drawing it upwards. The other problem we have, okay, too, is so the question of strikes, because right now we it's had It's there, amendment. though. It's there. You may have a few amendments, but it's in place and it's going forward, right? So I guess the, I, the question, yeah, I yeah, still have yeah. a question for you. It feels like it's a one moment in time fix. It doesn't, re it, it's, on, it's something that is supposed to happen. These consolidations right. will happen, and then we will still have the project of running our schools and controlling costs and right. assuring quality. So it's not like some kind of permanent fix. So it's but 2020. Also, is trying, also is trying to, to make sure that the property taxes didn't go well, up so did, high. Well, I mean, that, that was part of. I feel she what, feels it doesn't do it. Do you feel well, it doesn't I, I, do it? I feel that, well, we don't, we don't have the figures yet. We don't yeah, know. but you see, that's the problem. They, ca they couldn't estimate how much it might save because they didn't know how many schools might right. merge. And depending on who merges, there's going to be different patterns right. of cost. And I'm not sh saying there isn't cost saving yeah, the there, but we're not talking about 30, 40 million, and we're not talking right. about anytime soon. It's going to happen gradually over so time. So if my tax bill is a thousand two hundred dollars, it's very unlikely I'll see a two hundred dollar drop as a system. I mean, 
The only, I Not guess unless you did my t big tax reform plan, and I could get it for <laughs> Then it would yeah, be 200. Right. Yeah, but no. I mean, is uh, it really the, significant, I, I, I or is do, it just I, Yes, it is it's just around. It's, it it's going to bend the curve. All they can say is, we're going to try to moderate the rate of growth, and that's not nothing. So your tax right. bill may okay. not go down, but right. it may not go up. See, and, that, and, and at least that's a that's step good. in the right that's direction, good. and that's yes. what I was yes. concerned about. Yes. So, so, so when I go back yeah. to my constituents and say, well, what, they say, well, what do you do about the tax Yeah, bill? what are you doing? And I said, well, I voted for some cost containment here. Right. Yes. And, that's, and, so and that's true, and we both did. We both voted right. for the, the last version of the cost containment. Yeah. So far, the spending costs are coming in at a, at a moderate level. So the, the only yeah. problem is that the schools may be doing that by using reserves to avoid raising taxes. So that means that next year they won't have any reserves. <laughs> okay, so, so, you know, it, so, so okay. it is. It's 2020. Okay, so we did the consolidation. So okay. hopefully, we, hopefully we don't lose too many more kids, right? Otherwise right. this problem, this just keeps going, right? I mean, when, well, I, when, no, I no. Got here in the, when I got here in the 60s, there was five kids in Sangate, okay? So the question I'm always curious is like, how low can Vermont go? Yeah, but there's 40 now. There's 58. Because of, because of choice. See, that's the other funny thing. No, my thing. thing is about population, is oh. that is, it feels to me like all these things that we keep okay, I've got, hearing I've about. Okay, I've got, I've got this. I've but got you this. see what I'm getting at. Yeah, Act yeah. 46 seems to me to be a symptom of a problem, which is that we seem to be losing population kids. Right, and, and... And we don't know if that's done yet. So my question to you is like, all right, so is, is there an Act 47? All right, now there, we even there need would more. Be. There would be, because what, what's really going on is rural economic development. We're in a state where Chittenden County and maybe some parts of the Upper oh, Valley yeah. growing quickly, low unemployment rate. The rest of the state, including Rutland Us. and Bennington in the Northeast Kingdom, right. and really Brattleboro too, in a way, um, are not growing quickly, high unemployment. The right. state's economic development approach, in my opinion, has been too much giving special subsidies and tax rates to certain big profitable companies. That's right. Instead of putting money into extensions of infrastructure like high-speed internet coverage, exactly which right. the rural areas still which don't Sandgate have, needs. and that's Sandgate why there are no kids. That. And that's oh, no, why I there are no kids. I love smoke signals. It works well. Yeah. Get the <laughs> only when, blanket, the, only when the go. leaves are off the trees. Yeah. Um, only when the leaves no, are off the trees. No, but, but <laughs> that's the key thing for the rural schools, yeah. too, because if you can't run a business out of your home, if yeah. you can't telecommute, yeah, that's right. if your kids can't do their homework from that's home, because exactly right. homework's on Google Docs, right. why would you buy that house? You so, wouldn't buy the house. So you will not buy the that's house. That's right. So I actually have a bill, H710, that which I, is, which I support which he, he co-sponsored, which takes a million dollars from the capital bill, which is bonded dollars, and it invests in extensions of connectivities into the rural areas. Absolutely right. And Rupert, that is, for example, it's like, needs it. That's Rupert right. Needs Rupert, it. Rupert needs it. This need is it. rural electrification, right. but it's rural telecommunications. The state has promised this for right. 10 years, and they have not done now, it. Now, we're just we trying to, to finish well, so And that's, that's right. economic right. development, that's and economic. that's families, right. and that's kids. That, that's this the is, answer. And, this and is wait, big. But this but is just remind me, we're just trying to complete the process of getting everyone into that, right? We're not even talking about increasing the speeds here. No, um, no, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100. Oh, so we are even talking oh, yeah. about both. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because, that, because that, the standard this, yeah. keeps rising. This it, is really yeah. important. This yeah. is really, really yeah, necessary. Yeah, I, I'm and if, totally And I'll I tell you what. Yeah. If, if her bill goes through, if we, if we do that bill, Cynthia, we're going to have people moving to Vermont. There yes. will be entrepreneurs yeah. that want to come in here. So. There will be. No question about it. Because this will, I, I'll tell you, my kids in California and so on, they, they're waiting to come back to Vermont. But they can't come okay. under this under these right. conditions. Okay. They cannot come back okay. to Vermont. Okay. And this and this bill, there's a like a they they have these big economic development bills that move through the Senate and the House. Yeah. It's possible that this provision might become part of that bill, and it would probably be the most actual economic development that's in the bill because you tend to have a lot of different right. things. Some of them good, some of them. But but there is a chance of um, of 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 moving some version of this. And it'll be very interesting. It, I mean, some of the members of the Democratic leadership support it. Everybody knows that we haven't. Done. It's actually about education, too. Because yes. if you have a school yes. that doesn't have high-speed internet, right. they can't do Skype meetings. They can't, they can't right. do lo long-distance no. learning. And now with you our know, school boards being separated, we You're going to have to. That's yeah. right. <laughs> that's right. And you're so, making a joke out of Ira. <laughs> but the no, fact I'm is, you know, I'm you know, not Sandgate driving. and I Ira combined, combined, you know. So, well, um, who would stop it? Why would anybody stop this? It's, well, well, the main, the main, th it's actually looking really good because what I'm doing, what I've suggested, um, and it isn't just me, I mean, I work with getting advice from people. There's something called the Universal Service Fund, where yes. fees from telephone connections and everything already go. It's already being used. Is that used. hard lines or is that also mobile? No, no, it's, 
It's it's um it's hard lines. It's hard lines. it's it's fiber, you know, fiber connections. Okay. But you see, once you get the internet, the fiber connections good enough, you can have a micro cell, and right. that can give you your right. mobile phone, your 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 cell phone. So um, there's already this fund that has money. They're already giving grants for extensions of service. So I actually met with them on Friday, and I said, I want to be sure I'm doing what makes sense to you. Do you need more staff? Do you need to do it differently? What is the thing that's stopping you from getting this done? And they said we don't have enough money. And so I said, there you go. So the mm. capital bill is bonded dollars, so you want to be sure you invest bonded dollars in an asset, but that's what this is. Yeah. And yeah. because it's, and we've done this before, we've invested capital bill money, bonded dollars in telecommunications infrastructure. So this is to put a million dollars into that fund to, to give it more of a jump start to get more done faster, and then we can come back in the future and there might be the possibility of what's called like a revolving loan fund to get more done. So but can I ask you about the million? Yeah. Is, is that a realistic number or is it really we it's need 10 million? Get it no, we need get more. But remember, get started. But, I mean, but you, also you, you have to put, you have, you have to, to start. Put a, I yeah. know that. But also there's yeah. a capacity in yeah. terms of what can their staff do. You know, mm. if you gave them 10 million, they wouldn't be able to process that many grants and make Anyways. sure they were good. And they, because right. remember, it has to work. We can't just like throw money. Right. It has to work. So let's give them a million dollars. There's already like 300,000 in there or something. Let's give them a million dollars. See how they do. We come back next year. We fix it if there was anything not quite right. right. We give them more money and we go forward with it. Now, can Sandgate be um, like the trial place? Can we do well, that? Well, you know, there actually well. is the possibility. You could do that. You could work. Municipalities can form a committee and work to get a grant and then hire a provider to improve or extend service. I mean, I was going to talk to you about that because that's really true. Yeah. And I can send yeah. your contact information to the people at DPS. But this goes back to the importance of the local. Mm. And, and, you know, mm. you have to really yes. do the ground yes. up, mm. the grassroots, yes. the really, uh, and, and they have to, and they have to have autonomy to do that. In other words, there, there are going to be some towns that don't do as good a job because they don't have as much leadership. Right. But, but they need to have an opportunity to do the best they can do. That's right. And, mm -hmm. and, and uh, so, I, I, you know, it's really about how are you doing in your own town? And then maybe you want to look at regional, too, like look at the Benedict, Bennington County or something. But well, I, I think with the, the big towns always overpower the little towns. No, but this is, this, this, this is, this these is grants are only for people who, don't, who, who are underserved or unserved. These are for okay. the last mile. This okay. is for Sandgate. I got you. This yep. is not for making some corner of, um, you know, Springfield or Brattleboro right. or Burlington okay. better. This yeah. is, that's what this is for. And, and so, you know, it's the hardest part, and that's why we have to mobilize and we have to put money in it. But I don't think rural economic development is going to happen without it, and I don't think we're going to save the rural schools without it. Yeah. So it's really, really important. But a million dollars is just a start. It's All just, right. but, but it's really important. Last yeah. moments. Last well, I, I would just say, um, along, along the lines that we were just talking about, the, the local part with making decisions about renewable energy, I think are really important. Uh, Cynthia and I have had this conversation and uh, there's not a bill yet, but um, I'm supporting this, uh, this proposal um, that we've spoken about a lot. No, it's actually eight, eight, 850. H850. Eight, eight, oh, eight, it went in. Okay. Yeah. Oh, good. So H50, which means that that um, the small towns, if someone comes into your, your town from a major corporation, says we're going to put our, our wind turbines on your ridge, right? Uh, and the town has, by the because of the public service board, mm -hmm. um, has to listen mm -hmm. to the public service board and really is not able to to do what they need to do to to say, well, wait a second, we we, we should have a voice in here too. Um, and so this bill and this work allows for there to be more autonomy, and that's really important for us. Our, our, in our little state, right. we need to be able to have local autonomy in our communities. They can't even, th there's a woman, uh, Annette Smith, um, who um, recently was um, cited because uh, she was helping persons with, um, well, oh, oh, wait, with the public service board public thing. Public yeah, and the bill now is, wait, it's... Um, last thoughts, because yeah, we're almost out yeah, of time. Yeah, no, it's the same, on the same topic. It's topic. H850, and what the bill does, I mean, there's all kinds of issues about that the towns should have more role in the public service board mm. procedures and citing, and that's, that's actually other bills have already been introduced for that. But what this bill does is it says that when someone applies for a permit to do this giant wind turbine industrial 50 towers, they have to put aside some money, a percentage of value of the project in a fund that can be used so that individual neighbors or towns can hire 
lawyers. You can't participate mm. in that process without a lawyer. Right. Now, they have to justify it. They have to show there was a need and everything. But Annette Smith has gotten into trouble for unauthorized practice as a lawyer, which has been dismissed. It's not true. Because yes, she was right. trying to yeah. provide advice and guidance right. that people could not get from anywhere else, yeah. not even from their own the, Department of Public the Service. The corporations yes. are a juggernaut. Yes. Major corporations see the and that's the grassroots again. The state of Vermont as being a huge target for renewables because that's we right. want renewables in the state of Vermont. We believe in renewables, but, but they want to come. They, they want to come and bring in their big utility. And companies. we want small scale. And we want so small is beautiful here. Do yeah. your smalls. Yes. You know, make yes. sure you get your, your, your photovoltaic on your homes and so right. on. Let's find a way to do the best we can do in the state of Vermont on a scale, a good, smart scale. On a Vermont scale. And, and when the big on guys that, come in. folks, um, as you can see, we'll see you next Sorry. time. And I'm sure we're going to keep on going. So thanks for being here. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was fun.